Welcome back to another HSR video. People have been asking me what I think about Topaz, and how she will affect characters such as Himeko and Herta. In this guide, I will have a dedicated section where I will give my opinions on this topic. The guide also introduces different playstyles for Topaz. Choosing the best light cones and relics are backed by hours of work into spreadsheets. If you found the guide helpful, consider liking the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on up-to-date information. I always read everyone's comments, so feel free to ask questions that were not answered in the video. Without further ado. The leader of the Special Debts Picket Team, and high-level manager of the Strategic Investment Department under the Interastral Peace Corporation. A member of the Ten Stonehearts at a young age, her foundational expertise is debt retrieval. Her partner, the Warp Trotter, is also capable of keenly perceiving where riches are located, ensuring that jobs based in security, debt collection, and actuarial varieties are of no great challenge. At present, they are traveling the cosmos together, seeking all manner of liability disputes that might be affecting the stable progression of the IPC's businesses. Topaz and Numbi is a five-star fire character specializing in single-target damage with supportive capabilities. A hunt character would typically have high innate speed stat and high single-target damage. While Topaz follows the common traits of a hunt character, she also offers extra support to the team. Specifically, she improves the performance of characters that utilizes follow-up attacks in their kit. Looking at Topaz's whole kit, there's one thing that stands out the most. Her talent, Trotter Market, which summons Numbi at the start of the battle. Numbi has 80 speed stat by default. When it takes action, it will launch a follow-up attack that deals 150% of Topaz's attack stat at level 10. All of Topaz's abilities are focused on improving the performance of Numbi. Her skill would apply a status effect called Proof of Debt. Proof of Debt makes the target take more damage from follow-up attacks, up to 50% at level 10. This status effect is considered as a vulnerability debuff, which makes it quite powerful. It should not be mistaken as a damage percent boost. If there are no enemies that are inflicted with Proof of Debt status when an ally takes action, it is automatically applied on a random enemy. Since there can only be one enemy with proof of debt status at a time, Topaz's skill is basically used to switch Numbi's target focus. After proof of debt is applied, Numbi would launch a follow-up attack on the target, dealing 150% of Topaz's attack stat at level 10. Proof of debt works in synergy with Topaz's talent. Every time the affected target receives damage from follow-up attacks, Numbi's action is advanced forward by 50%. This means that the more follow-up attacks you trigger, the more frequently Numbi acts. Topaz's ultimate is a straightforward buff for Numbi. It increases the attack modifier of Numbi's attack by a flat 150% and boosts its critical damage by 25%. Additionally, while the buff is active, enemies taking damage from an ally's basic attack, skill, or ultimate would advance Numbi's action by 50%. Numbi automatically exits this buffed state after two attacks. Since Topaz's skill forces Numbi to perform a follow-up attack, the bonuses would immediately apply on this attack and consume one out of the two buff stacks. Last but not the least, Topaz's basic attacks. There's two main reasons why Topaz's basic attacks play a huge part in her overall performance. First is due to her A2 trace that makes her basic attack considered as a follow-up attack. So not only will its damage get boosted by proof of debt, but it can also help advance Numbi's action forward through her talent. The second reason is due to Topaz's skill modifier, which is only 150% at level 10. Meanwhile, at level 6, Topaz's basic attack has a 100% attack modifier. What this ultimately means is that Topaz's skill only has 50% extra attack modifier compared to her basic attack. We will keep this in mind as we move forward. There are two optimal playstyles for Topaz. One is SP positive, and the other is SP neutral. While it is possible to play Topaz as SP negative, I wouldn't say it is optimal, but don't allow anyone to stop you from experimenting an SP negative playstyle. 
Unfortunately, I won't consider it for my calculations. As the name already implies, an SP-positive playstyle means that Topaz would generate SP for the team. Topaz can perform very well with just spamming basic attacks due to her A2 trace. As mentioned earlier, you only get an extra 50% attack modifier by using Topaz's skill over her basic attack, which makes you question whether it was worth the SP consumption or not. As for the SP neutral playstyle, it uses an attack pattern where Topaz alternates her skill and basic attack. This allows Topaz to rotate her ultimate faster, which gives a notable increase on her overall damage output. Here's Topaz's ultimate rotation for both playstyles. The SP positive playstyle will use a 5 turn ultimate rotation, while the SP neutral playstyle will use a 4 turn ultimate rotation. Both rotations lack 5 energy to guarantee their cycles so ideally. Topaz needs to get a kill or get hit once per rotation. Now that we have our attack patterns, I will use this on my calculator to figure out Topaz's best light cones and relics. Starting with Topaz's best in slot. That will be her signature light cone, Worrisome Blissful. This is Topaz damage on her SP positive and SP neutral playstyles equipped with her signature LC at rank 1. Topaz deals roughly 15% more damage with an SP neutral playstyle. Whether going for an SP neutral playstyle or SP positive playstyle ultimately depends on you. I won't do very direct damage comparisons with other characters anymore, but only give a rough example just so you have an idea on how strong Topaz can be. When it comes to individual performance against a single target, Topaz damage is quite comparable to the single target damage of Kafka. Just don't forget that Kafka easily wins in an AoE scenario. Back to the Light Cone's effects, not only is it a very strong LC for Topaz, but it also provides a critical damage boost to allies. While it is not an absolute necessity to pull Topaz's signature LC, I highly recommend getting it. To save us time, here's Topaz's Light Cone ranking. Her best free-to-play LC would be Stellar C, a Light Cone that can be bought from Herta's shop. Within this ranking, it assumes a one-turn downtime on its attack buff, and assumes 50% uptime for the extra critical rate boost. It is definitely not that much weaker, but don't forget that technically, Topaz's signature LC should be higher in the ranking due to its team-wide buff. Notable 4-star LC mention would be Swordplay. A single skill cast is enough to cap Swordplay's passive. Due to Topaz being naturally hungry for attack stat and Swordplay mostly giving damage percent boost, you can opt for an attack sphere and would get a higher overall damage output. Sleep Like the Dead is a great alternative, even if it's just a stat stick. In the Night is technically the same, but can have more potential for an SP-positive playstyle. Return to Darkness is only good at rank 5 and its performance is very close to only Silence Remains. Just don't forget that the constant buff dispel from Return to Darkness is one of its main features. Starting with the Planner set. Inert Salsado is Topaz's best in slot. It is around 3.7% stronger than the Space Ceiling Station. Since all of Topaz's attacks are considered follow-up attacks, the 15% damage boost from Salsado is applied to all of her attacks. Just remember that 3.7% is still within the realm of pick the one with the better substats. But if you've yet to farm for Topaz's relics, you should aim for Inert Salsado. For the main stats, Aim for an attack rope since energy rope is a huge damage loss. For the sphere, fire damage is the safest choice, but an attack sphere could sometimes be better or just slightly worse. As for Topaz's cavern relics, you can go for a two-piece combination between the firesmith set, musketeer set, messenger set, and thief set. The ideal combination would be two-piece firesmith and two-piece musketeer. You should only consider the other sets depending on your needs, or if the pieces have very good substat rolls. For the main stats, aim for either critical rate or critical damage for the body. For the boots, it is usually safe to go for speed, but attack main stat is also viable depending on the team setup. Numbi's speed is 80, which means that if Topaz is at 160 speed, she will get her turn while Numbi still needs 50% AV to take action. Since Topaz will use either her skill or basic attack on her turn, and hit the enemy affected by proof of debt, then Numbi will advance forward by 50% and be able to act. After that, both Topaz and Numbi would reset and restart the same pattern. 
This tech makes sure that no advance forward from Topaz's talent is wasted, and Topaz will guarantee a Numbi follow-up attack per turn. However, the issue with going for speed boots and aiming for speed substat rolls is that there is too much damage loss. Luckily, there's an easy fix to this problem. If we take a look at Topaz's base speed stat and Asta's speed buff at level 10, that will be 110 plus 50, which is equal to 160 total speed. Coincidence? Basically, if you can guarantee a 100% uptime on Asta's ultimate buff, Topaz can drop speed boots for more damage and have an exact speed amount to maximize the effect of her talent. This might be a hard pill to swallow, but Topaz isn't exactly fit for a main carry role. Her skill doesn't have an impressive attack modifier, and her A2 trace clearly encourages the use of her basic attacks. Now don't get me wrong, her single target damage is definitely high and is still quite overkill for our current content. Heck, I myself would experiment using her as a solo carry. But being viable as a solo carry doesn't mean it's optimal. Remember, outside the debuff application of her skill, it only has 50% extra attack modifier compared to her basic attack. Using one SP for that is simply not worth it. Therefore, Topaz is ideally used as an SP positive sub damage dealer with a solid support for characters that utilizes follow up attacks. Let's start with Jing Yuan. Out of all damage dealers that utilize follow up attacks, Jing Yuan has the strongest one with his Lightning Lord. There is this misconception where people would say, Lightning Lord is too slow so it doesn't synergize with Topaz. The thing is, there is no need to obsess over increasing Numbi's attack frequency. What Jing Yuan really wants from Topaz is that 50% vulnerability debuff for follow-up attacks. Remember that vulnerability isn't as common as other damage multipliers, which means that if Topaz is the only character that is applying a vulnerability debuff on the enemy, Lightning Lord's damage is straight up boosted by 50%. Not to mention, we need to consider that Topaz herself dishes out high single target damage. She could easily do three to five times more damage than fully optimized sub-dealer harmonies like Asta and Yukong. I would rate the Topaz X Jing Yuan pairing a 10 out of 10. Next is Herta. Herta's damage source is spread throughout her entire kit, meaning she doesn't benefit as much from the vulnerability debuff of Topaz. This leaves us with helping increase Numbi's attack frequency. The problem is, Herta doesn't help with this either. You see, if Topaz brings down an enemy to below 50% HP, Herta would trigger a follow-up attack first before Numbi. This means that unless Numbi was at 0% action value when Topaz attacked, you didn't really get much value out of that follow-up attack from Herta. Let's say Topaz attacked, followed up by Numbi, and Numbi managed to bring down the enemy to below 50% HP. Herta would spin afterwards, but not trigger Topaz's talent because Numbi's turn had not ended yet. The worst part about pairing these two is that even if Herta triggers multiple spins at once, it only counts as one trigger count for Topaz's talent. I would rate Topaz x Herta pairing a 0 out of 10. Chinke is similar to Herta in a way. Her damage source is spread throughout her entire kit so she can't capitalize much from Topaz's vulnerability debuff. I would rate the Topaz x Chinque pairing a 5 out of 10. As for Kafka and E4 Bronya, there are two ways to trigger Topaz's talent efficiently. One, Numbi needs to be close to 0% AV when Topaz performs a basic attack, so that Kafka or Bronya's follow-up attack give an extra 50% push for a 100% advance forward in total. Two, Kafka or Bronya's follow-up attack should be triggered by another character than Topaz herself. Also, Numbi needs to be at 50% action value or less when this follow-up was triggered. If these conditions are met, they will create a perfect rotation with a 160 speed Topaz. If you can meet the conditions, I would rate the synergy a 7 out of 10, otherwise, 0 out of 10. Finally, our counter-attackers, Clara and March 7th. There is no doubt when it comes to Topaz and Clara's synergy, so that's a straight 10 out of 10. March, on the other hand, is not as great as you'd think. The main issue is the fact that you need to trigger the follow-up attack and hit the target with proof of debt. While that is easy for Clara's AoE follow-up attacks, it is a problem for March 7th's single-target follow-up attacks. I would rate the Topaz X March pairing a 5 out of 10. I didn't mention Himeko in the previous section because I want to talk about her here. 
The synergy between Topaz and Himeko doesn't stop at the fact that Himeko can launch follow-up attacks. In fact, there is way much more into it. Himeko being an erudition character automatically solves the lack of AoE damage from hunt characters such as Topaz. Both being fire elements means that you can get so much mileage out of bringing Asta into the team. And as mentioned earlier, Asta easily enables the 160 speed tech of Topaz. As Himeko covers for Topaz's glaring weakness, this fire team gives Himeko something in return. An absurd amount of toughness break. If you did not know, Himeko relies a lot on breaking enemy toughness bars. When an elite or boss type enemy gets weakness broken, it instantly charges Himeko's talent to max and causes her to perform a follow-up attack. If you're using her signature LC Milky Way, then breaking enemies becomes a much higher priority so that the buff coming from the LC maintains a good uptime. With the 160 speed tech on Topaz, you can expect a minimum of 90 toughness break from herself and Numbi on every turn. 120 toughness break if you are willing to use an SP for Topaz's skill. To put that into perspective, that is like 3 to 4 basic attacks worth of toughness break on each of Topaz's turns. And let's not forget Asta's own toughness bar breaking capabilities. At E1, Asta's skill can do up to 105 toughness break. Faster breaks mean stronger Himeko. Faster breaks means you will trigger the strong upfront damage of fire elements break effect more frequently. The Topaz fire team will be very competitive. Topaz's first Eidolon, Future Market, increases the critical damage dealt by follow-up attacks against the enemy affected by proof of debt. For Topaz herself, this can range from 8.5% to 17% overall damage increase. Just remember that you can get more value out of this if your teammate utilizes follow-up attacks as well. Topaz's second Eidolon, Bonafide Acquisition, gives Topaz five extra energy whenever Numbi takes actions and launches an attack. I know what you're thinking. You might be wondering if Topaz's skill would trigger this effect since it forcefully makes Numbi perform a follow-up attack. The answer is no, it won't. This Eidolon only triggers on Numbi's own turn. However, this Eidolon is still very strong simply because it reduces the turns needed for Topaz's ultimate rotation by one. For the SP positive playstyle, the gain from E0 to E2 is 38.6%. The SP neutral playstyle removes a basic attack from its rotation converting it into an SP negative playstyle, but the damage gain from E0 to E2 would be 47.1%. Topaz's fourth Eidolon, Agile Operation, allows Topaz to easily perform her 160 speed tech without needing Asta to be in her team. However, it would still require Topaz to have 128 speed. This Eidolon is perfect if the other damage dealer doesn't particularly synergize well with Asta. Topaz's last Eidolon, Incentive Mechanism, increases the attacks Numbi could perform under its buffed state by one. Additionally, all attacks within its buffed state would penetrate the enemy's fire resistance by 10%. While this Eidolon doesn't particularly reduce the turns required for Topaz's ultimate rotation, it is still a very straightforward and strong Eidolon. For the SP positive playstyle, the gain from E0 to E6 is 107%. For the SP negative playstyle, the gain from E0 to E6 is 122%. I would rate her E1 and E2 as a good stopping point. Her only next huge gain is by going to E6. Short disclaimer, everyone is free to bring anyone to their teams. I'm just going to mention some of Topaz's notable teams. Obviously, Topaz herself would be most comfortable under a fire team. Asta is mandatory. Next is a fire character that specializes in AoE damage. This can be Himeko or Gunaifen. Himeko is great for the follow-up attack synergy. Gunaifen doesn't offer as much damage as Himeko, but as a Nihility character, she can offer defense reduction through Resolution LC. Remember that defense reduction greatly improves the damage of fire elements strong upfront break damage too. Last slot is for the sustain. Next is Topaz supporting a heavy hitter that specializes in follow-up attacks. This could be Jing Yuan or Clara. The third slot is for the support which depends on who your main carry is. Last slot is for the sustain. As for the team with Topaz as the main carry, I've yet to experiment with this so this will be made into a separate video.
Overall, Topaz is a breath of fresh air when it comes to the damage dealers of limited banners. Should you try to pull or build Topaz if you get the chance? It depends. Personally, I think that the biggest reason to pull for her is to be one step closer to having the strongest fire team in the game. Because unfortunately, you don't exactly need Topaz anywhere else. Riho said the perfect quote on this topic, Topaz fixes a problem that doesn't exist, which I totally agree on. For example, let's take a look at the three characters that benefit from Topaz the most, Jingyuan, Clara, and Himeko. These three are performing well in a solo carry team setup even before Topaz's arrival. I know some would argue that Himeko actually needs Topaz because she is weak by default, but I disagree. Himeko is totally fine in a solo carry team setup. However, I would agree that Topaz is a massive quality of life change for Himeko in a fire team, which is something to consider when deciding whether to pull for Topaz or not. Topaz won't be that fire Jingliu or fire Imbibitor Lunai that most people would want, but don't forget that on top of Topaz's competitive single target damage output, she can support her team by boosting their damage and adopt an SP positive playstyle that opens up whole new strategies. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.